Welcome to the Career Change Podcast, where you'll discover the frank and practical advice and resources that are already proven to work in the real world when it comes to changing careers or figuring out what business is right for you when you are a smart but likely also stuck, overwhelmed or overthinking person in your mid-30s, your 40s, your mid-50s. I'm your host, Ricky Hansen, a career change advisor, entrepreneur and former corporate HR professional with over 15 years experience of helping thousands of people just like you identify or create careers or businesses that are both meaningful and future-proof. Welcome home. Hey, it's Ricky here and welcome to episode eight of the Career Change Podcast. Let's talk about age. It's my birthday month. I've just turned 46. So I've been thinking a little bit more about age than usual, especially when it comes to what do I want the next 46 years to be about, right? Because often when you sort of get to your birthday and when you think about age, it's so easy to look at what's behind you and regrets and all that stuff. But my biggest mission, really, the old I get, and feel free to borrow this, is always going to be, how can I make the rest of my life the best years of my life? Because that's really the best antidote to, oh, my best years are behind me, or, oh, I'm getting so old, and all of this and that. So I'm always about, how can we take the most empowering approach? And by the way, feel free to borrow that. How can I make the rest of my life the best years of my life? I'm super grateful to still be alive at this age. You know, if I, if you and I had been born in the 19th century, we would have been six feet under by now, possibly even by years, right? <laughs> life expectancy has pretty much doubled over the last couple of centuries. So you, my dear listener, you and I still have a very long way to go. Let's talk about how to make the most of it especially when it comes to work. Here's why. You've likely hit play on this particular podcast episode because you're wondering, are you too old? Have you left it too late? You're wondering whether it's really too late to start your own company or make a big career transition or to move into a new field at your age, right? I totally get that question. Am I too old? Have I left it too late? But if that's what you are wondering, if there's part of you that's wondering, have you left it too late? Are you too old? then it also potentially tells me a lot about where you might be stuck right now and how you actually look at age and the years left or not. So let's talk about that because it's super important, especially since you and I, those of us over a certain age, we want to make sure that we are not complicit in supporting ageism and enforcing stereotypes. So I am all about challenging people's assumptions about what's possible and about age. So what I've noticed with a lot of people, with a lot of my clients over the last 15 years as a career change advisor, so a lot of my clients are Gen X, you know, so 40 to 55. Most of my clients tend to be in that range, 35 to 55. And I I see very much people fall in to two category in terms of how they actually think of that age question, am I too old or not? And most people fall into the first category, which is what I call those people who tend to, instead of look forward, they look back. So this might be you if you, really what you look at when you think about the question, am I too old? Have I left it too late? You very much look back at your life and maybe worry that your best days are behind you. And because you work so hard to get to where you are now, you might focus a lot on what you stand to lose if you were to make a big change. You you invested so much in your career, in your work so far, that even if you don't like it, it can seem crazy to throw it away, to give it up. You might also have, like, you know, many people, societal, parental, cultural conditioning around what somebody at your age ought to do or not. And maybe part of you also even just wonders, can't you just be happy with what you've got? Why do you need to make such a big change? But that's very much what I call the backwards looking. So you might be looking more back and and worry and think that it's too late. There's another category I've noticed, and this is a much smaller category, but my mission is to expand that category. And that's what I call the forward looking people, where really, rather than looking back and regretting and thinking it's too late, they look forward they're really curious about their real potential, about what they're capable of. Because if they've never really found their things, their their thing, or they're not really happy in their career, then they're really curious about what's ahead of them. How can they still reach their full potential? What are they capable of? And they very much focus on what they stand to gain as opposed to what they stand to lose. And like I said, definitely I'm in that category. It's like, how can we make the rest 
of our lives, the best years of a work life. It's almost, I, I often say to my clients, just think about everything up until this moment as the warm-up band. And now you're ready for your big thing. So just take a moment. Where do you tend to focus most? Do you tend to focus on what you stand to lose or what you stand to gain? Do you tend to worry that your best years are behind you? Or are you more curious about what's ahead? you know, curiosity driven or fear driven. And let me remind you, you are not a fixed entity. So even if right now you might fall into the first category in terms of very much looking back and looking at what you stand to lose, you can absolutely change and become part of the second category. But right now, I just wanted to do a quick check. Where would you sit right now in terms of your own answer to that question? Am I too old? Have I left it too late? Because that is the important one to be aware of. I'm really big about talking about age and I'm really big on on changing people's attitudes, both towards themselves, that's you, my friend, and also others when it comes to age, because let's make sure that you and I are not part of those who actually keep a culture of ageism alive, because a lot of people at a certain age are very complicit in keeping ageism alive because they themselves believe that it's too late. Let's be part of the generation of people who are normalizing, finding your best work, creating your best works in your 40s, your 50s plus. We're changing careers, starting a business and having a bloody epic time. It's becoming the norm. That's what I'm here to help you. That's what I've been helping people with for ages. And that's really what I want you to think about what is also a possibility for you. Here's the real thing, though, and I want to get really, really frank about this because this is a massive issue, and if part of you is worrying that it's too late, then I want to help you address that. So let's get really frank about what's really at stake here and why it's so important that you are potentially open to changing your mind about this question. Let's get really frank about what's at stake here. Here's my advice to you. Don't focus on worrying about being too old or having left it too late. Instead, switch your attention and your focus on them towards the many years you and I still have left to work before retirement compared to how many years you've already been working and focus on what you want those years to be like. Especially if you're not happy in your career, or in your line of work right now, you know, don't worry if it's too late or if you're too old. Worry about the many more years of regret, frustration, and unexpressed potential that you will still have to live through hour by hour, day by day, week by week, month by one, year by year, if you don't make that change now. Here's what I mean by that. It's not just a life expectancy that's been increasing over the last couple of hundred years. We're not just living longer, we are also working longer. Many, many more years of our lives than ever are dedicated to work. You know, and also retirement aging is rising. This month in the UK, it's just increased to 66. And the language is already around, you know, get used to it increasing frequently. I believe the Retirement age in the US is 67. But we all know, you and I, by the stage we get there, you know, it's a conservative estimate to think that it's going to stay at 70. And that's hoping that we've actually scrapped together enough money to retire. That's a whole different question. So most of my listeners, most of my clients, you know, there are 35, 55 from all over the world. So let me take an example here of what I mean. Um, Samantha, a client I recently had, Samantha is 43. She entered, she's a lawyer, not a happy lawyer at all, but entered the legal profession when she was 23. By the stage, she came to me and really wanted a career change. She'd worked in law for 20 years. Guess what? She still has way more than 20 years left to work if she were to stay in that profession until retirement. Would you recommend, so Samantha at 43, would you recommend to someone like her when she asked me the question, am I too old, have I left it too late, to say to a person at the quotation mark, ripe old age of 43, that they should worry about being too old or having left it too late, especially if this person does not like working in law and kind of just fell into it in her 20s. 
And she has even longer left to work in that profession that she's already worked. Just think about that. Switch your attention. What she should worry about is not being too old or being too late. She should worry about the fact that she does not like what she's doing in her profession. And by thinking that she's too old, she's left to too late, she's pretty much like the default thing is, therefore, she's going to have to stay even longer doing that thing she doesn't like. That, my friend, is what she and you should worry a lot more about, all right? We are the generation that's very much being forced and have the opportunity to normalize finding your life's work in your 40s, your 50s plus, changing careers, starting businesses, and then doing that again and again over the coming years. You get my point. So just work out how many years you have left to work, right? I don't know how old you are, but let's say we take 70 as being a very conservative estimate for what the retirement age is going to be when we get there. And like I said, that's if you've got enough money, but just take that 70. How many years do you have left until 70? Write that number out, put it on a post-it note on your computer or somewhere you can see it. If that is not motivating you to make a big change, I don't know what is. But do you see what you're doing when you're saying, am I too old? Have I left it too late? You're very much looking back you know, and and thinking that's it. But if you look forward, what you should worry about is getting the most of of those many, many years that you still have left to work. But do you see how most people have it completely backwards, right? That's also a great excuse, right? Now, I could stop there, but I want to go even further because I know this is a hard question. It's not that I am saying to you that I don't get it, I don't understand it. I totally understand how hard a question this can be to wrestle with, especially if you've invested a lot of time, blood and sweat and tears into your current line of work. Like most of my clients they have by the stage they get to me. So let's, for example, say you spend the last 23 years working in law like Samantha, and now you're considering starting your own online business or, you know, changing into a different career. How come that you are still so torn and feeling it so difficult to let go of your career in law when you no longer enjoy it? What's going on? Let me introduce you here to the concept uh, called the sunk cost fallacy, the sunk cost fallacy. And that's really this idea that we have a much greater tendency to continue an endeavor like a career once an investment of money, effort, and time has been made. That's normal, but it's totally rational. Here's why. The concept of sunk cost actually comes from finance. And a sunk cost is a cost that once it's, you know, you've incurred it, but it's done, it's paid for, and it cannot be recovered. And in finance, the primary insight of a sunk cost is that it should have no impact on future decisions. It's a sunk cost, i.e. it's irrelevant going forward. That's why when I see people who worry about all that stuff they've invested that they don't even like, that's the sunk cost fallacy, right? You are so afraid of letting go of it because you feel like you invested so much And human psychology has a really crazy, irrational attachment to sunk cost. I'm sure you can think of a lot of things that you've done in your life because you felt like you invested something, you spent a certain amount of time, you've done something you ought to continue, even if you hate it, you don't like it. That's just that irrational thing that we have. But here's the deal. Do you really want, taking Sam again as an example, do you really want those 23 potentially miserable years you spent as a lawyer be the reason why you decide to insist on spending the next the next 23 plus years the same way just because of the sunk costs involved? When you see it like that, it's obvious, right? Or do you want to make the change now so the next 23 plus years could become the best and most exciting years of your work life? Why would you want to throw good years after bad years? You know, here's the deal. This is really future opportunity versus future cost we're talking about. You know, make the decision based on what you want your future to be, not based on what you've done up in the past up until this moment. Resist that sunk cost fallacy. Make the decision from the future. You might have heard me say this in another episode. I have an advisory board and I recommend that you do as well. And one of the one of the most important Uh, people advisors on that board is my 70, 75-year-old self, that Ricky, 
who's going to look back at me and say, okay, let's think about you. Think about yourself at 70, 75. What would that person say to you right now? Oh yeah, just stay stuck in that career, that job you hate that's making you miserable for another 35 years. I am going to be such a jolly, happy, epic person by the time I get 70. Nah, I don't think he or she would say that, right? It's never about whether you are too old. It's about how you want to spend the rest of your life from this moment onwards. Don't let the years that you've invested in your current career overshadow the real cost of staying stuck there for the next 20 to 30 years plus. And yes, there will always be people or companies that are going to think you are too old. But don't focus on them because they can't help you. Make sure, this is so important, there will, yes, there will always be other people who think you're too old, you left it too late, but that is exactly why it's so important that you decide to answer that question for yourself first in the most empowering possible way. But do you see where I'm going with this? You are, you and I, we are each have an impact in terms of how we are going to either reinforce or challenge ageism. So make sure you answer this question for yourself first before you start complaining about what others might think, right? I always challenge my own assumptions. It is one of the healthiest things that you can possibly do. But let's dig even deeper. You know that I like doing that. So here's another thing I've noticed. Career changes and one of the entrepreneurs, you know, their belief about what's possible for them very much influences the actions they take or not or what they believe about themselves. So let me ask you this. Is it really down to the fact that maybe you don't actually believe that you have what it takes to change careers or start a business at your age or at any age? Maybe do you deep down believe that a lot of things are out of your hands or do you actually believe that you have a lot of agency in terms of changing things? This, again, Nothing is fixed. Just be aware of where you are right now and then you've got the option to change, right? But here's something I really want you to think about because it might not just be a matter of age. It might also be other things that are holding you back. So here's something I, I, I want to share with you that I've seen again and again. And you might have heard this quote and it's the Henry Ford quote. And it says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. I love that quote because it emphasizes just how much your attitude determines success or failure. And do you know what? Study after study after study has actually proven that quote to be right. We'll talk about that in a minute. But really the basis of motivation is very much your belief in whether you've got the capacity, the ability to affect change or not. So let me introduce you to a university professor who's in his 90s and who's actually still working. He's a professor at Stanford University, Albert Bandura, um, Canadian-American psychologist. He's very much the, uh, you probably heard him quoted, he's always within the top five of, of psychologist quotes. So he, he's very much the father of a more optimistic and empowering way of looking at psychology. You know, he doesn't believe psychology, it's not destiny, you're not earmarked for life with all kinds of things. He was really one of those um, people when he came, especially in his 70s, with some of his seminal papers, really challenging these ideas that we're all this kind of black box and there's not a lot you can do. And he's a very interesting character, by the way. If you Google Albert Bandura, there's some wonderful interviews with him. He's just, I love him because he's one of those older people who's just so, you know, intellectually bright and still just so enthusiastic about his subject. I love Googling people like that because that's what you want to be. That's the kind of role model. I recommend you start looking at people much older than you and you might have to do some digging because the media is not fantastic at that. And let's change that too. Anyway, one of his breakthroughs, and this was in this... Um, article just a couple of years after I was born, actually, um, where he introduced, it was a, a seminal article where he introduced, it's also a book, <laughs> you can either Google, it, it's around the concept of self-efficacy, self-efficacy. And he really defines self-efficacy as the belief in one's capabilities to organize and execute the course of action required to manage prospective situations. Now, this is, you know, self-efficacy, the ability to impact change for you to actually 
believe that you have that power. And it's highly relevant, both when it comes to career change and when it comes to age. A lot of his research and a lot of the, the people who sort of helped him with the research and did relevant research, it was very much about proving that people's belief or not in their efficacy affects almost everything that they do, how they think, how they motivate themselves, how they feel, how they behave. So study after study really shows that how we judge ourselves or what we believe about ourselves and our capabilities, they're very, very important in real terms. Because if you believe that you are capable of something, that will actually directly increase your chances of making it happen. Whereas if you judge yourself as not capable, same thing. You know that very well, right? If you believe something, you're going to go for it. If you kind of don't really believe it, you're just going to half ass it, right? So Henry Ford was right. And again, like I said, you have the ability to change this. But how about, let me ask you this, does your way of thinking about yourself and about your age and about your career change right now, does that help or hinder you, right? How do you think about age? This is something that um, Bandura also talked about is that you either have, um, people either tend to think of themselves and what they're capable of in terms of what he calls in a self-enhancing manner, more like an optimistic manner, or in a self-debilitating, more pessimistic manner. And if you think about it, of course, that influences everything. So here's how you know where you might fall into right now and how you can change. So often when I speak to people um, about career change and about studying their own business and about age, one group of people will very much be, um, or the, the people who fall into the sort of self-enhancing way of thinking very much, but there, there's always something they can do. They believe they have agency. They have, they, they can make things happen. Whereas the other group is more the, the sort of um, self-debilitating, pessimistic, where it's like, oh, but most things are out of my hands anyway. So just ask yourself right now, where do you actually sit? Do you believe that most things are out of your hands? So why even bother? Or do you believe that, yes, you have the ability to make a dent and therefore you're going to go for it? Here's a really great way. Of, I mean, here's why this is so important for you to challenge and get to know what you really think. Because if you do believe that most things are out of your hands, then you're probably not even going to try. And maybe that's why you're stuck. Versus if you actually... Dis and also, here's the thing. Action will override. So this is not just a matter of just changing your mindset, how you think or believe. It's also a matter of taking action because action gives you proof in the real world. But that's me getting ahead of myself there. But here's a great way to start implementing this. So when you think about something um, that you really want to do, like changing careers or starting your own business, then it's not a, then you wouldn't ask, ooh, do you think I can reach my goal? Instead, what you ask yourself is, what is required of me to reach my goal? Do you see the switch? And try to apply that to the question about age as well. So instead of, do you think I am too old? Do you think I left it too late? You ask yourself, what is required of me to change? And what can I do? And what can I focus on? My friend, stop giving your power away. Don't outsource your agency make up your own mind. Yes, there is ageism, but it's up to all of us to change that in ourselves first. A lot of us have a lot of biases, a lot of ideas, a lot of things about age. And this is why I'm being very, very direct in this particular episode, because maybe part of the issue is that you yourself secretly, you know, have the ageism, you know, that's what you believe. Let's change that. Take this really, really personally. Whenever I find something in myself that I'm like, oh, whoa, I really need to change that, I always try to latch onto a much bigger purpose. You and I have the chance to become real role models about what's possible at any age when it comes to career change, when it comes to businesses, and especially if you are potentially willing to do your own business, collaborate with people who also believe in people like you, we can change all of this step by step. Not overnight. There's always going to be, um, I'm not going to swear on this podcast, but there are always going to be people out there who won't agree. But let's just ignore them. Let's be so loud and so proud that they just, they will see the evidence out there. Okay? You really, I, I really want you to think long and hard about this. Every time you ask a question, how can you make it a more empowering way? And how can you ask yourself first what you believe? 
and then challenge yourself to believe and act in a much more empowering way. All right? So here's the deal. Am I too old? Have I left it too late? That is totally up to you. But I can tell you that I've seen again and again that people who decide that they want to become a role model for what's possible and they go ahead and do it. Have you noticed the shift there is? Especially with with a lot of us who are Gen X. When we see other people of a certain age doing things, we're like, that's so cool. I want to give you my money. I want to help you. You know, I just this last week alone, there are three businesses I have bought from, I purchased from, I got really excited because they on purpose made it clear that they were a certain age and they were loud and proud. Come join us. Be part of that, my friend. Stop giving your power away. This is not about whether you're too old, whether you left it too late. This is about looking forward and thinking about how can you make the rest of your life the best years of your life, right? Let me help you with that. So if you like this podcast episode, please share it with a couple of friends who might be worried about that age creation so we can deal with that stuff together. Also, what I would suggest is I'm going to talk a lot more about age. So what are your biggest questions about this? Make sure you sign up for my newsletter over the careerchangepodcast.com. My newsletter subscribers very much decide what I'm going to be talking about on this podcast. So let me know what are the subjects you struggle most with that you want me to talk about, All right? Now, here's the fun bit. Alba Bandura used to, even in his 80s, 90s, sign off his emails with this quote, may the efficacy force be with you. I wish that for you too. All right. If you like this, come on over to the careerchangepodcast.com and let's show the world just what we're capable of. I'm sending you a big virtual hug. Thank you. (laughs) 